I am not fond of the approach uh, taken by some brands and businesses where the idea of selling is camouflaged, where they call someone something else other than a, a sales professional. And that's because I believe that being a sales professional is a great honor and I believe it's something that we shouldn't hide from. At the same time, there are areas where presenting yourself as being focused on the sale and having the sale be a primary objective could be problematic. And of course, those situations are where you should have some um, fiduciary, fiduciary responsibility, for example or uh, in healthcare, or in uh, someone's grieving, you know, you could, you could be someone involved in um, uh, the end of one's life or uh, memorials and, and in those situations you don't want to be focused on what you have to sell in that process. So there's something to be said for making sure that you are aligned with the objectives of your client and aligned with their thinking. There are some situations where selling is uh, something that you don't want to be the primary focus because of the point of view of so many people that selling is something that is bad. Selling is something that people don't want to experience. So I will concede that there are times when that isn't a good thing to be up front. I've always liked the idea of the trusted advisor. And this phrase became uh, prominent and common, I would say, in early, maybe in the late 90s or so. This idea that I'm here to advise you. And I think uh, this is a powerful concept. And frankly, I think all sales professionals should use that phrase and that thinking as they approach clients. You're there to advise them on the best options. And the, the client can make the appropriate decision. But being there as an advisor is an important mindset. Uh, because it puts you in a very different mode. It puts you in a mode of guidance, support, um, um, care, concern, uh, all those things that are so positive in a business transaction. So you're not dealing with someone who's thinking about their self-interest. You're dealing with someone who's thinking about your best interest as a client. And having a responsibility there and having a focus there I think is very important. So the question is how do we do that? And how do we make sure that that is up front, make sure that that comes across, make sure that we're in that mode, and make sure that that enables us to have a better conversation with the client and a better outcome, better interaction, better experience, and hopefully um, a more rewarding um, finish for both parties. Well, I think the first thing is the idea of gratitude. And, and so many sales professionals and entrepreneurs forget about this. But the idea of thanking the person for contacting you, thanking the person for coming in, thanking the person for um, thinking of your organization as someone to do business with. I think it's very important. And I like the idea of doing that up front. I think it's a very important way to start an interaction and to start a relationship. Uh, they'll often say, when you're flying a plane, they'll say, we, we know you have a choice uh, to meet your travel needs, and we're so glad that you chose American, Delta, British Airways, whatever it is. And that's nice at the end of the flight, but it's even nicer at the beginning of the flight to thank people and to thank your client for deciding 
that they are going to engage with you. That really sets the tone very nicely. And when you're in that thankfulness, that gratitude, it really uh, lowers the, the um, resistance in your client. It puts you in the right mode. It puts you in the mode of service. And it, it sets the stage for really nice conversation. So what should happen next? Well, obviously, you're going to need some information, no matter what you do. Whether you sell jewelry, whether you're an interior designer, whether you're remodeling a kitchen, whether you're going to do a, um, a, uh, a, a custom suit, uh, you're going to need some information about the person. And that might involve a series of questions. It might involve um, an analysis of their current condition. It might involve a site visit. It might involve measurements. But questions are the next process. And I think that, that guiding your client through what the process is is important as well. So that they understand what they're going to experience. I remember as a kid, I broke my arm and I was terrified of the, of the doctor. And I was terrified because uh, a number of the people I knew that went to the, to the doctor in the hospital came back worse off than they, than they, than they were before they, before they went. And uh, my father died when I was very young. And, and I, uh, you know, my, my thought of hospitals and doctors was that it was the place where people go and often don't come out. And so I remember when I broke my arm and the doctor uh, walked me through everything that he was going to do. He said, I'm going to you know, get a feel for whether there's any pain here. I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna x-ray this and that's not gonna hurt. Here's what we're doing. Uh, I remember when they were putting on the cast, they were telling me about the cast and the process. And then when I came back weeks later and, and they removed the cast, he was letting me know that this, this uh, tool they used, it was like a saw cutting through the cast, was not going to hurt and that it was going to all be fine. And, and I remember how I felt after that experience, even as a, as a young kid, that, that wow, walking me through that was so valuable. So whatever you sell, whatever you offer, walk your clients through what you're going to do. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to need this. And, and, and they're partners in the process, and that makes them feel really good about working with you. You've expressed thankfulness. You've asked some questions. And so now you, you're at a point where um, you're at a good place with the client. They're engaged you're engaged, you know more, and the next step really is to express a level of understanding about what's happening. Now, this is where the professional comes in. Well, this is where you can, you can look at something and say, well, I can see that this um, watch was um, uh, a model that came out in, in this particular year, and I can see you have this this thing that could be modified, this, this option here. I can see you, you've got the higher level option, and, and when they made that, they, they, uh, they chose to use this kind of uh, goal setting. You see, once you is express this understanding, you're showing your expertise, you're educating your client, and you're letting them know um, what you know that they don't know and you're letting them know that they're in good hands and you're guiding them through the process of servicing them properly so understanding that's the the next step now the next thing you should say after you have an understanding is you should walk them through what the next step will be after that and I think a good way to, to, to handle that is to say, I'm going to give you a few options. I'm going to walk you through some of your choices here. And I'm going to share with you the, 
the design differences, the, the, uh, the timing differences, the material differences, and of course the financial differences, and you'll be able to make a decision what's right for you. Again, this is not a person who's pushing anybody. This is not a person who's twisting anyone's arm. This is a person who is a trusted advisor walking someone through the various options. Now somewhere in here, it could, it could go right after this, could have gone earlier, but, but somewhere after this, it's a good time to reinforce your credibility. This is a very good time to say, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years and I've seen a lot of people with this kind of situation. It doesn't come up all the time, but, but it often comes up. And you have a unique thing that, that has surfaced here that we can uh, address. I don't want to alar alarm you, but this is, a, this, is, this is a design challenge. And I'm so glad that you came in because we have some experience with this. Um, I had a client that uh, had a similar challenge and we did a great job for them. They were so happy at the end of it. They had just moved to the area and they came to us. We took a look at what they had to do, uh, what they needed, and we were able to address their needs. So your credibility there uh, can be pivotal in helping that client understand that you are really someone who can solve their problem and make them feel good about it. And then the last piece of this is really saying to them, okay, um, after I've made these, after I present these options, well, you know, you'll, you'll have to make your decision. So if, if you go through those options, after you say, you know, you walk through the options, give them the detail, maybe show them the examples, maybe you walk them through the differences, um, then the question is, which one are you leaning toward? Um, now you might even after that, which would be good, you might say, well, that's a good choice, or that's a good choice. Um, make that person feel, because you're not going to present anything that isn't a good choice, hopefully. So whatever they choose could be a, a good choice, and if the person is wavering or unclear, well then you have the opportunity to uh, say, would you like my recommendation? And that's where you are presenting the option that you believe would be best for them. Uh, and at that point, it should be really clear to you what's best for them. At that point, there should be lots of trust. There should be lots of value. Now. You can do this in, in any business that you have, whether it's a um, consulting business, whether you're selling a tangible product. And by the way, even if you're selling a tangible product, you're consulting with them. You should be consulting with them. And perhaps that's why some, of, some companies will say sales consultant, because they want you to think in those terms. But my point here is get to a place where, you're, where you are truly advising the client and and it isn't just in name it's in practice so what are these steps the first one is you want to thank the client you want to thank the client for visiting you for calling you for choosing you for looking at you as an option the second thing is you want to get some questions you want to gather some information you want to figure out uh, what it is that you need to uh, fully advise them the third thing is you want to demonstrate that you have a very crisp, clear understanding of their needs. The next step is you want to present options to them. What are the options here? Uh, the next step is credibility. You want to demonstrate credibility. And then the next step is uh, asking the client to make a decision. And uh, if you want to add a couple of uh, additional steps to the process that that will really help you one is uh, reassuring the client that they've made a good decision and if the client is at a place of indecision indecision uh, help them by uh, giving them a recommendation uh, if you like this tip
on how to uh, truly become a trusted advisor, uh, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Uh, make sure you uh, share it with someone in your network, someone who's uh, working to become more um, successful in their business, more successful in their sales um, um, results, and someone who really could um, become a great advisor. And of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I have a lot more coming. I'll see you next time.